Welcome back to Bloomberg Markets. I'm Alex Steele. And I'm Scarlett Fu. If I told you that there's a 29-room house in Midtown Manhattan filled with custom furniture valued at under $10 million, open for viewing tomorrow, Alex, would you go? <laughs> Bargain! I'd say, what's the catch? Well, like a lot of New York State uh, real estate stories, there is, of course, a huge cash. Small. <laughs> small. Yeah, small, because we're talking <laughs> about a dollhouse. The Asala Dollhouse Castle has been appraised at 8 dollars million dollars so you can't really move in Alex but you can go see it you can start to see it starting tomorrow it'll be on display at the Time Warner Center through December 8th and Patrick Clark a real estate reporter for Bloomberg News has seen it he covers the dollhouse beat for Bloomberg pursuits uh, Pat seriously how do you value a dollhouse eight and a half million dollars what's the criteria for that well so I think it's there's 30,000 decorative items inside which are these tiny suits of armor or miniature taxidermy uh, bottles of liquor about this big that, that have real liquor? real liquor in it. Uh, and so uh, these have been collected over decades and uh, based on you know the totality of those items uh, somebody decided this is worth eight and a half million dollars which is uh, more than two thousand dollars a square inch. Um, how does that compare to Manhattan real estate prices? It's a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, talk us through, through the history of the dollhouse world. I mean, when did it wind up becoming, in essence, a store of value? The story that I was told by the curator of this exhibit is that uh, in the 17th century, uh, kind of wealthy families in northern Europe started uh, collecting dollhouses as a way of sort of displaying fine, the finest craftsmanship of the day. Uh, because it, it takes a lot of work and expertise to build something so, so small and so accurate to real life. Uh, by the 19th century, they became uh, mass production items, and you know you'd find them in the. Uh, nursery of every you know middle class house or so um, and and now they seem to sort of be returning to a uh, almost a luxury item I think the most famous dollhouse in the world was built for Queen Mary in of, of England in the 1920s uh, has working plumbing in it apparently it's working plumbing toilets that flush is, is, is what I'm told and uh, it's on display I think or it has been displayed in Windsor Castle so there are a handful of these that have uh, floated around and and now uh, the Astolot Castle and of course if you go to Chicago to the Art Institute of Chicago on the basement floor uh, there's a 68 thorn miniature rooms where you can really see the European interiors of homes from say the 13th century to the 1930s it's pretty remarkable um, you talk about how they were once bespoke items and now it's become kind of mass-produced do people actually go into their attics and find dollhouses that might be worth millions of dollars I don't know about millions of dollars but you know if you're in your uh, grandparents attic sometime uh, you might as well go and check so what winds up happening to this uh, dollhouse mansion? It's on display, and then what, is it going to get auctioned it, off, or what? No, it's going to be at the Time Warner Center for a few weeks. Uh, go check it out. Uh, I think their intention is then to tour it around the U.S. or perhaps uh, around the world and uh, and raise money for children's charities. And and what the organizers of the exhibit told me is that they will then decide whether it'll go on permanent tour or back into storage in 66 boxes it took to transport 66 this thing. boxes unreal amazing have to go see it thank you so much you can read pat's story on the world's most valuable dollhouse at bloombergpursuits.com those, those pictures, pictures were amazing. i know incredible all right we've got more coming up on bloomberg market